Well, there's more outrage among South Africans following the latest murders of women. 28-year-old Sehofato Pule was found hanging from a tree in the Rudaport area on Monday after being reported missing on the 4th of June. She was eight months pregnant. Now, the family and provincial authorities addressing the media a short while ago. When Seho left on Thursday, she was called by her boyfriend that they should go and buy her unborn child the, the clothes. And uh, that was the last time the family saw her alive. And uh, when she didn't answer her phone, so when she didn't uh, return the WhatsApp messages, that's when the family started being concerned. And uh, on Friday as well, we tried not only to call Tiho to get hold of Tiho, we also tried to get hold of the boyfriend whom we couldn't get hold of. We were also told that the boyfriend at that time was being interrogated by police officers. The details of which I cannot share at this stage because the investigations are still ongoing. We were told that the, she was discovered on the field and then we were called to identify if indeed the body match the description of Seho, and that's exactly what happened. Uh, okay. As for my people, children are their oppressors, right. and women rule over them. And women will rule over these, bo these boys. They're going to be raised up by their mothers. This is the effect of what happens when a boy has been raised by his mother. Right? Oh, my people. They which lead thee cause thee to err. They cause you to and be emotional. They cause you to be emotional. Go ahead. And destroy the way of thy path. And destroy the way of your path to manhood. They destroy that path for you to be a man. You understand? And because they what? They cause you to err. They raise you up to be emotional. This is what happens next. Second Ezra chapter 5 verse 8. Let's read that. Second Ezra chapter 5 and verse 8. Read that. Second is chapter 5, verse 8. Go ahead. There shall be a, con a confusion also in many places. Mm -hmm. And the fire shall oft be sent out again. So the many places, guess what it says? There shall be a confusion also in many places. Wherever the children of Israel were scattered, there's confusion. Wherever we at. You understand? There's confusion in the black household. We don't know who's the man, who's the woman, because why? We're following the ways of Babylon, America, Europe. You understand? Western culture, we rejected God's commandments, which is where our culture is found. Read. And the fire shall oft be sent out again. Read. And the wild beasts shall change their places. Come on. And menstruous women shall bring forth monsters. You see that part right there? And menstruous women, unclean women, shall bring forth monsters. Because the monsters, the, these, these menstruous women will bring forth monstrous black men. They will raise up monstrous black men. That's what the Lord is teaching us here. You understand? Because of what broken family households. That's what the Lord is teaching us. Let me just jump in there and just ask in terms of, I mean, the, obviously that, uh, you know, the investigations aren't going at this stage, but what are you hoping for as a family coming out from this investigation uh, in terms of justice for Tsekho? We, we're hoping that the killers should be brought to books if indeed it was more than one person. If it is a killer, we're hoping that that person should be brought to books. And then that not only that, we also hope that the justice system will also take its course where this person will be given a long time in, in jail after this whole exercise has been done. And it, it should also serve as a deterrence. I mean, every day we hear the pleas, we hear the plight of women uh, about the, the GBVs, and then it's high time we as men the stand up against that and it's also high time that we we do that we we become more proactive in these things but we hope that the killer or the killer should be brought to justice
Well, justice has been served, and that's the sentiment coming from Tsekhufat Zobule's loved ones. The South Gauteng High Court has sentenced convicted murderer and Tutuko Shoba to life imprisonment for masterminding Tsekhufat Zobule's killing. Now, she was shot and found hanging from a tree back in June of 2020. Uh, this after, uh, rather, Shoba had ordered, ordered a hit on her, and she was eight months pregnant with Tutuko Shoba's child. Here's ENCA reporter Slendula Masigani with that story. Mr. Shoba was the driving force behind the scheme and has done nothing since Ms. Poulet's murder to merit the kind of leniency that Mr. Malapani received. Mr. Macabella did not identify any other factor that would justify a departure from the statutory penalty. He drew my attention to the year or so that Mr. Shoba has spent in pre-trial incarceration, but accepted that this could not on its own justify a departure from that penalty. Mr. Shorba, can you stand up, please? For all these reasons, Mr. Shorba, I am enjoined by the statute to apply the ordinary sentence for an offence of this nature. You will spend the rest of your natural life in prison unless the parole authorities consider you fit for release in the fullness of time. The court will adjourn. Emotional scenes inside court as Ndutu Goshoba is sentenced to life imprisonment. Now I accept that, as Mr. Makabela submitted, I should not punish Mr. Shoba merely for pleading not guilty and maintaining his innocence. But that does not mean that Mr. Shoba is entitled to the leniency that was extended to Mr. Malapani. The default legal position in respect of both men is that they would both have faced life imprisonment unless such a sentence would be disproportionate. To say that Mr. Malapani's cooperation with the police rendered a life sentence in his case disproportionate is not the same as saying that Mr. Shorber is being punished for not cooperating with the police. I am also persuaded that Mr. Shorba's role as the prime mover in the planning and commissioning of the offence distinguishes his situation from that of Mr. Malapani. But for Mr. Shorba, Ms. Poulet, Ms. Poulet would not have been killed. But if Mr. Malapani had not accepted the contract on Ms. Poulet's life, the facts of this case strongly suggest that Mr. Shorba would have carried on looking for a way to kill Ms. Poulet with or without Mr. Malapani's help. Tsekhufadzo Poulet's family says they're relieved. Obviously, it's been um, a long journey. For the whole two years, you can imagine the emotions that we've been carrying as a family. Uh, but I think at the end of the day, all we can say is that justice has been served. Uh, this is all that we've been praying for and hoping for, for all these times that we've been coming to court. Uh, the ordeal that we went through as a family and uh, the sufferings that uh, Mr. Shoba has put us through as a family. I think it, it felt like we, we were bearing Tsukhofatsu again inside the court, hence the emotions that erupted. But I guess from here, it, it's... It's for us to put this whole thing behind us, start mourning and, and start the healing process as well. The family says it's been a long journey, but with Shoba behind bars, they believe Tsekho can finally rest in peace. Slinda Lomasigan, Johannesburg.